This desk and this chair is from one of the schools in Mongol Township here, an early desk and an early chair. The books that are on the table here were used in Mongol Township in one of the early schools in the 1800s. This was the first Mongol school, which is now the museum. To the best of my knowledge, this is the only picture in existence of this brick schoolhouse. This was Marble Township's first ice cream parlor, and I know all school children love ice cream. I started school in Marble in 1930, and the school children back in those days, they were interested in hunting, fishing, the girls were interested in sewing, learning how to cook, taking picnics. The boys were interested in trapping. Uh, later on, I became interested in their bicycles, taking care of their bicycles, uh, skating. They enjoyed sports. Living in the 90s in the United States of America, it seems that women have come a long way, and we certainly have. For instance, it used to be unusual to see women voting, but now we see them being voted for. However, people still seem to have the fixation that men are the primary breadwinners and women are the primary homemakers. Men and women even today are expected to assume roles according to this paradigm. I'm not talking about the superiority versus inferiority of these roles, but rather the fact that they're not viewed as interchangeable in our society. We are going to be coming into the cafeterias with these photographers. We're going to be coming into your classrooms. We're going to be stopping you in the halls. I want to ask you to think about it for a while. Is there something you learned in class that you found extremely interesting? Was there a story in English? Or maybe a phrase in a foreign language? Or maybe a science experiment? Or maybe just a teacher or a guidance counselor anywhere from grammar school up to high school who took their time out to make a difference, to talk to you, and maybe made a little bit of a difference in your lives. Hi, my name is Greg, and I'm here at the CD-ROM station in the library. I'm researching information for my social studies report on Joseph McCarthy. Um, here in school, I've learned how to use the computer to research all kinds of information here in the library. Bonjour, je m'appelle Parmi, et je m'appelle Nicole. Nous étudions le français à Mando High School de Paris, Saint-Gaud. Nous aimons notre prof, Madame Day. Nous sommes bien préparés pour assister à un cours de français à l'université. We've learned how to speak French well. <laughs> I really enjoyed uh, literature in English, especially all the stories we read. Uh, my favorite was probably Great Gatsby, and I like to read about all the really cool parties they had back then. Great facility at the school store. Uh, I've taken a couple of business courses, so it helps me uh, put whatever I learn into into practice. Um, we have such things as clothing here, t-shirts, sweatshirts, and then we have supplies for the students if they need any. And then they have a healthy variety of uh, candy and food, basically to fulfill the students' needs. I learned that after I eat this huge piece of cake and I run two or three miles, I can burn off the calories. <laughs> it's good to be young. <laughs> I learned the calories. I see. What about it? faculty in the math department taught me creative methods of doing math problems. <laughs> and they said, well, if we take the equator right here, these are perpendicular right there, but what happens right here? They intersect. So two lines that are perpendicular to the same line are supposed to be parallel. You would call it that. But they don't. They intersect. So that in a geometry based on 
on the surface of this spheroid or this sphere, you have no parallel lines. If you define your lines in straight circles. I remember in my freshman science class, we were learning about the planets, and it was really interesting. And I always wondered if there were other life forms living on different planets. <laughs> Four years or so in Mongo High School, we were working on an engine. Simple steps, and I like the creative way it was uh, taught to me. It helped me a lot, and I use it every day in life. Welcome, everyone. I'm Blake Jeffrey. We have our categories valued from $100 to $500. Let's take a look and see what today's categories are. We have algebra, words, math. word problems, sports math, famous numbers, and television famous numbers. Famous numbers for 500 the number of squares on a checkerboard to the two-thirds power. <laughs> yes, Jason? What is 32? I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Alan? That is correct. For 1,000. A mermaid's undergarment. <laughs> Yes or not? What is an algebra? That is correct. What is an algebra? <laughs> Look at the figure. All the angles look like they're right angles. They're all perpendicular. So something's wrong. It's attached to them. And if you really look at it, you'll notice it's off. The perspective is off. one point perspective. We always start off with a vanishing point and a horizon line. perspective we create the illusion of space and depth even though we know it's flat it's exciting at Marvel high school i've learned how to be a mountain climber and i'm no longer afraid of heights check this out just a big time courageous females in this school and only a few males so that I can sing well and use a diaphragm so that the voice, the voice comes out clear and the intonation is good. All right, Monta, we have a 25-point audio bonus opportunity for you. We want you to tell us the name of the composer of this piece. Listen to the music, and then I have one more clue for you if you need it. brother Ira were responsible for a large number of classic Broadway and movie songs. Now, for 25 points, can you name this composer? George Gershwin. George Gershwin is correct. I learned about the Constitution, learned about history, 
I'm very proud that I brought Congressman Gallup to this high school. I remember the mock presidential debate here in which I played Ross Perot. Well, again, I want to make it very clear that we don't want to hang. Thank you. Well, the Four years of hard work and dedication can pay off on the football field. We had a record of 7-1 in the Northern Hills Conference and won Montville High School's first conference title. These are some of the major things we learned this year. As a linebacker, I learned the proper way to throw a forearm. As a quarterback, when you drop back to pass, there are many things you have to look at. You have to see in the backfield how the receivers are getting away from their uh, from the defenders, and also you have to avoid the big fat linemen as they come in and tackle you, like this. Um, and then you have to get the pass off yourself. <laughs> and they never would have done it without the cheaters. Spirit and enthusiasm. All
Okay, we have the tornado effect. This is Wizard of Oz experiment. Um, appears to be a yellowish color. What we have here, it's very interesting. It looks like it, it appears to have broken up the... <laughs> the color has now changed from yellow to orange. I think orange. you got the idea. Do you see what that looked like before? Okay, there we go. There we go. Uh, there it is. Tornado. This is how ninth grade earth science students at Montville learn about the solar system. Tell me, between what two planets, Halley's Comet comes, where does it come closest to the sun? In between uh, Venus and Mercury. between Venus and Mercury, right? This computer lab cost Montville nearly $50,000. That may seem like a hefty price to pay, but these students rank number one in the state in chemistry and second in the state in earth science. What is this? Ah, well, it looks like a TV. <laughs> But if you can see, it's attached to a microscope, and it's called a videoscope. Because when you have 25 or more students in a classroom, they're all yelling, please come over here. Is this what I'm supposed to see? Is this what I'm supposed to see? So instead, we at least focus one up here so the students can get an idea of what they should be seeing on their microscope. So this really helps the teacher teach. Absolutely. Ruth, let me turn to you. Um, we saw your kids. I have to tell you, of, of all the pieces that I've done and uh, shooting out in the field, I was incredibly impressed with your operation. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've learned that Jurassic is one of the time periods in um, the development of the Earth, and that was when there were a lot of dinosaurs. These are dinosaur tracks in red slate from Peace Valley taken from Hartman Greeland's quarry. This piece of slate is in a Princeton Museum, and it comes from Monkle Township. <laughs>
We have the greatest opportunity to leave our mark on history. I believe our generation also has the greatest potential for happiness. Will we finally find a cure for cancer? Will we solve the problem of overpopulation? Will we finally forge a lasting peace? The goals we as a generation have set are lofty indeed, and the stakes are very high. But think on the rewards. What we will deliver into the hands of our posterity will be a tremendous gift, the gift of a better life. And so I did deliver this final challenge. I ask you to make the most of this magnificent opportunity. I dare you to give happiness a chance, and I challenge you to make your lives extraordinary. The patriotic music of this great nation touches the soul of every American, from traditional tunes of early America to the joyous sounds of today's youth. And now, the 60 members of the Montreal Township High School Choir from New Jersey team up with the NCA Spirit Leaders as they perform America Sings. America Sings, 